Hi, and welcome to this video on 3D printing process selection. Today, you learn how to choose the correct 3D printing process for your design. Selecting the optimal 3D printing process for a particular part can be difficult as there's often more than one suitable process. Each one will produce subtle variations in both cost and output. Generally, there are three ways to select the right process. First, through the material, meaning the required material is already known. Second, through the functionality or visual appearance. The characteristics of the end part are already defined. Third, through the manufacturing capabilities. Now, let's go over these in more detail. Selecting the right process by material. If the required material is already known, selecting the process is relatively easy, as only a few technologies produce parts from the same materials. In those cases, the selection process usually becomes a cost versus properties comparison. Polymers, plastics, and metals are the two main 3D printing material groups but other materials, such as ceramics or composites, are also available. Polymers can be broken down further into thermoplastics and thermosets. Thermoplastics are best suited for functional applications, including the manufacturing of end-use parts and functional prototypes. They have good mechanical properties and high impact, abrasion, and chemical resistance. They can also be filled with carbon, glass, or other additives to enhance their physical properties. Nylon, PEI, and ASA are widely used to produce end-use parts for industrial applications. SLS or MJF parts have better mechanical and physical properties, higher dimensional accuracy, and superior surface finish. But FTM is more economical and has shorter lead times. This pyramid shows the most common thermoplastic materials for 3D printing. As a rule of thumb, the higher up material is in the pyramid, the better its mechanical properties, but the harder it generally is to print, meaning higher costs. Thermosets, or resins, are best suited for applications where aesthetics are important, as they can produce parts with smooth, injection-like surfaces and fine details. Generally, thermosets have high stiffness and are more brittle than thermoplastics, making them unsuitable for functional applications. Material jetting produces parts with superior dimensional accuracy and generally smoother surfaces, but at a higher cost than SLA or DLP. Moving on to metals. Metal 3D printed parts have excellent mechanical properties and can operate at high temperatures. The freeform capabilities of 3D printing make them ideal for lightweight applications for the aerospace and medical industries. DMLS or SLM parts have superior mechanical properties and tolerances. However, binder jetting can be up to 10 times cheaper as well as being able to produce much larger parts. Other materials can be 3D printed, but they are not as widely used since their applications are limited. Moving on to the second way of selecting a process, the functionality or appearance. It is important to determine early in the selection process whether the main design consideration is function or visual appearance. This will help greatly in choosing the most suitable process. Let's look at functionality. This flowchart can help you identify the most suitable 3D printing process based on common design requirements for functional parts and prototypes. When designing a part or prototype that will interfere with other components, it is important to define the necessary level of tolerance. Selecting the process with higher dimensional accuracy will increase the cost. Another option is to finish features with critical dimensions or small details after printing. For example, by drilling holes or tapping threads. Overall part strength depends on different mechanical and physical properties. To simplify the selection, the material tensile strength can be used as guidance. When high strength and stiffness are required, Metal 3D printing or FDM reinforced with continuous carbon fiber are the best solutions. Engineering 3D printing materials are available with special properties such as heat resistance, flame resistance, chemical resistance, or that are certified as biocompatible or food safe. Flexibility can be defined as either high elongation at break where thermoplastics such as TPU are available in SLS and FDM or as low hardness, where materials with a rubber-like feel are available for SLA or DLP and material jetting. Now, let's look at visual appearance. When visual appearance is the main concern, then the 3D printing process selection can be simplified using this flowchart. Both SLA or DLP and material jetting can produce parts with smooth, injection mold-like surface finishes. The main difference between the two processes, apart from the cost, is that support in material jetting is soluble while in SLA or DLP, it needs to be removed manually after printing. SLA or DLP parts are printed semi-transparent and can be post-processed to be almost 100% optically clear. Parts with a special texture, such as a wood-like or metal-like finish, can be printed using wood fill or metal fill FDM filaments. Rubber-like parts are soft, with a shore hardness of 70A, and can bend and compress, 
but lack the performance of true rubber. And finally, the third way to select the right 3D printing process for you. When the model design is already finalized, the capabilities of each 3D printing technology will often play the main role in the process selection. It is important to have an overview of the fundamental mechanics of each process in order to fully understand the key benefits and their limitations. Here are some handy rules and aspects to keep in mind. Dimensional accuracy. Dimensional accuracy is connected to the level of detail each process can achieve and the build quality of each 3D printer. Processes that offer higher accuracy can usually produce parts with finer details. Industrial grade machines have higher accuracy and repeatability compared to desktop machines. Build size. The build size determines the maximum dimensions of a part that a printer can produce. For components that exceed the typical build size, consider choosing a different technology or split the parts up so that they can be assembled later. Support structures. The need for support structures determines the level of design freedom. There are processes that require no supports like SLS or MJF. Material jetting or dual extrusion FDM require supports, however, these can be dissolved later. Therefore, SLS or MJF can produce freeform structures with greater ease. Layer height. Another important aspect to consider when choosing a technology is the impact of layer height. Due to the additive nature of 3D printing, layer height determines the smoothness of the printed surface and the minimum feature size a printer can produce in the Z direction. Using a smaller layer height also makes the stair-stepping effect less prominent. This also helps produce more accurate curved surfaces. Finally, let's go over the rules of thumb when selecting a process. First, determine early in the selection process if functionality or visual appearance is the priority. Second, when more than one process can produce parts in the same material, the selection process becomes a cost versus properties comparison. Third, for functional polymer parts, prefer thermoplastics, SLS or FDM, over thermosets. Fourth, for visual appearance and aesthetics, SLS or MJF is the best option. Fifth, for metal parts, choose DMLS, SLM, for high performance applications and binder jetting for lower cost and larger part size. Finally, for functional parts in metal or plastic, also consider CNC machining. I hope this video is helpful for you. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Our knowledge base also has several articles on the subject, so be sure to check it out. Links are in the description below. See you in the next video.